Hello and welcome to Portland Park here in Trun and it's uh, probably too early to say yeah. relegation game but <laughs> both teams are languishing at the bottom six just now Rebecca and Trun in particular and they'll be picking up the points since the, the new management's come in. I mean, it's a home game, so you're thinking this is the time to really stick out and try and get some goals in here and hopefully start with the new management. It can take a wee while to start racking in the goals and that, but hopefully they start to pick up. In a home game here the day, hopefully a good crowd comes around and that gives them the kind of boost they're needing and start getting in points and start getting in. And Brother Glenn, they've been a bit ambitious as well. They've picked up and nearly got a good save out of that in there. <laughs> they picked up in a, a player, I think, for Livingston, I think it was. Yeah. Anderson. Finley Anderson, yeah. So they're showing a bit of ambition as well. Yeah. So who knows where it's going to go? Yeah. I'm not going to predict this time, Rebecca. Are you going to try a prediction? Yeah, okay, I'll try a prediction then. I'm going to say, I'm going to say a nice two-one for Rutherglen. A nice two-one. Yeah. <laughs> the last time we were here, I think Rutherglen ran riot. Oh, right. uh, that was a couple of seasons, well, two seasons ago, I think two it was. Seasons. And it was St. Andrew earlier on there. It was a top of your goal free kick. If I remember right. Let's well, hopefully get a remake then. Well, we'll get a remake good. of that, aye. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. The patches, patches look great. Uh, it's a nice day as well. Per perfect for a football match. Yeah. I'm going to go 1-0. One 1-0. All. One all. Let's go and see this game. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, we're here with Johnny Bailey, manager of Trin. John, congratulations. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Be very happy with that performance today. Absolutely delighted, yeah, to get three points and a clean sheet as well. I know uh, Rutherland will be disappointed at missing the penalty, but I, I felt that we we deserved to win the game, so i delighted just to, to see it over the line. Yeah, we were talking at half-time where we thought he's kind of... He's won the midfield battle a lot throughout the game that kind of helped push his on up the park. Aye, well, we should have because we had an extra man in there, the, the formation that Rutherland played, and we played a different formation, so we had an extra man, so we should win the midfield battle. And I said that to the boys at half-time, that although we for the first 20 minutes I think we were too passive and we'd, we sat off them in the midfield and we allowed them to play, um, so I challenged the boys at half-time, or we challenged the boys as a coaching staff to go and be more aggressive in their defending, like go up against somebody, go and press somebody. Uh, and I think we did it a lot better towards the end of the first half and then again in the second half. Yeah, I thought that did come through. You could see the players kind of battling and pushing and wanting it more in midfield. Yeah, I, the, the players have been great. The players have given us everything. We're down to bare bones with squad-wise and stuff. And I know everybody's the same, so I'm not I'm no kind of looking for any sympathy. But um, the players have given us absolutely everything they've got again today. And uh, we've got boys playing through injury and boys taking painkillers to play. It's, it's great. They just want to do well for the club and help the club win games. So, Yeah, well, thank you very much for talking to us. Congratulations no on the win. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Uh, we're here with Trin's John Gemmell today. Uh, John, we were talking, we've uh, thought you were putting a great performance today. We thought you were the man of the match. OK, right, brilliant, no worries. Thank you. Uh, you'll be happy with the performance though and the three points, yeah? Yeah, it's brilliant. We've, we've had a couple of, couple of bad results the last couple of weeks, so um, we've been quite strong at home against Clyde Bank, um, Cumnock and Irvine Meadow. We've only now lost one goal in those four games, so uh, no, we're, we're, we're good at home, just need to carry the home form into the away, away performance. Yeah, we are talking to your manager there, we said we thought you kind of had a, a lot of battle about you today, good fight, good spirit, yeah, we'll be happy to have seen that come through. There was a big game for us today, I know it's only early in the season, but um, today was a massive game for us, just to, so we don't start getting separated from the pack. We know it's going to be a struggle, we're not, we know we're going to finish in the bottom half of the table, but... Um, any, any improvement on where we finished last season will be great for us. Our, our main aim is just to survive in the league and, and, and get a good few wins as well, do you know what I mean? So, but we've done that today. Uh, we've got Joe Price with us here today. Joe, what's your thoughts on that performance today? Well, obviously, from your point of view, pretty poor fair. Poor fair. Uh, first half, nowhere near it. Nowhere near it. Second half, worked a bit harder, but, you know, boys really don't deserve any credit just for working hard. There should be a wee bit more quality there. And we just didn't have it today. We didn't have it today. You know, and a couple of decent chances. We have a good chance in the first half. Liam's right through. And obviously the penalty kick. Listen, boys, boys have got the guts to step up and take the penalty kick. So yeah. it can happen. Best players in the world miss penalty kicks. It can happen. But congratulations to three. And I thought, yeah. over the piece, they probably deserved it. They probably deserved it. You know, and when things aren't going for you, I'm not really going for you. You know, we got a man sent half. And mm -hmm. obviously we meet with three subs and then right away, yeah. boys got to come off injured. But there's no time to feel sorry for ourselves. Yeah. We're in the big league now, we're in with the big boys and dust yourself off and go again, it's as simple as that. <laughs> we're definitely on. Yeah, we're recording. There's a wee blur there. Yep. That was a rush of blood. <laughs> well, here we are at full time and it's 1 0 to Troon against Rutherford Glencairn. I'm going to go to Rebecca, you've been filming the whole game and you've had a bird's eye view up there. What did you think of the game so far? Uh, well, I feel like the first like half, I felt like uh, Rutherland came out the stronger team. Like they came out and they were like forcing Trun back and they're straight on them in the whole game. Like they came out more fighting. I think Trun took a wee minute to get into the game than what Rutherland did. But then as soon as that, as soon as after that 20 minutes or so, 
I think uh, Trent just took the better half. Like they just they were in the middle, they were just fighting, they were making more space. I think really going really picking up their men, so there was just that all that space for Trent to exploit and then they, they got a goal from it. They got a wee run down the right hand side and then there was all that space in the middle for the striker just to easily walk in and take a goal and that was the goal for the thing. Uh, for the second half, again I'd say Trent was the better team. I think they were on top of the Rutherglen a lot more, they were taking more chances and they were making more gameplay than what Rutherglen were. I feel like the Rutherglen were taking a bit too long on the ball instead of actually looking for space and move movement but after that I'd say yeah, Trent were definitely the better game, uh, team today. So. I think, Andrew, you were picking out certain players. There was a couple of players mm -hmm. you picked out. I think the centre-half, obviously, was, yeah. was your man in the match. Yeah. yeah. You felt it was really good. I thought rather when, especially in the second half, they started committing a lot more men forward, trying to get balls in from the wide areas. The big centre-half swept that up, no problem. Yeah. My name, Gemmel. Yep. Centre-half. Gemmel, yep. <laughs> Wish at half his height, I'd probably be playing senior football. <laughs> but anyway, I had a great game. But I thought in the yeah, first half, we were talking, I to Rebecca, mm -hmm. the number six with Troon. Yep. Was, was yeah, terrific. another standout. Yep. He's saving them a lot at times, like getting in there, making the gameplay. Like he was like the maker of the game, I'd say. Doing the work that you don't really notice as much as well, kind of sweeping up uh, before the ball reaches the centre halves, and then just playing it simple. Kind of a very good game as well. Just to mention that uh, one of our Fitbit Shorts camera crew has moved on, and uh, he's filming at Sandylands TV, which is Salkett's Vix Juniors, and he'll be adding that into our reports as well. So good luck to young Aidan. Uh, and what he's doing, he's still going to be a part of our project, but he's out there doing his own thing, which is great for us. Yeah. Anyway, next game, a couple of weeks' time, but the big game that's coming up, just to announce, that uh, we're going to do a Killer Ladies game, a Kilmarnock. And this young lady plays for the team. It'll be on the 22nd of September, Rugby Park, they're playing Dundee United, and the whole Fitba Shorts crew will be there to film that. And I hope you'll be there. So, once again, for Portland Park here in Trun, Trun 1, Glen Cairn, nil. From Eddie, the crew, see you next time.